Mia Farrow, already a popular personality without pushing for the limelight, a lively and intelligent young woman. Roman Polanski, a young controversial European movie director making his first Hollywood film. This film shows their first encounter, the meeting of the two intriguing characters with widely different backgrounds. Production started on location in New York, and in spite of the first day's tensions, they found they could work well together. I direct this way. I let actors rehearse. I never tell them where should they go or what should they do in the scene. I let them do it first, and usually what they do instinctively is the right thing. I do my homework. I think about it. I know the direction and what's to happen and how. And uh, I do it. And it very often surprises me, you know, what comes out. Roman is a craftsman, the best, and I trusted him all the way. And he was never wrong. And, and we never disagreed on anything. I, I don't think there was an issue between us. Well, I think she's wonderful, actually. Sometimes she's astonishing. She's so good. And she's right. I remember that during the first rehearsals, I was really surprised how instinctively she picks up the right uh, 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 key when she says something, how she, how right it sounds in her mouth. She, she, she's just right. Yes, Doctor. Mrs. Woodhouse? Yes. Oh, thank you, thank you for calling me. Now that you're in California. No, no, I've, I've been to another doctor, and he, he isn't good, Dr. Hill. He's been lying to me and giving me uh, unusual kinds of drinks and capsules. The baby's due on Tuesday. Remember you told me June 28th? Well, I want you to deliver it. Mrs. Woodhouse. No, please, please let, me, let me talk to you. Let me come and explain what's been going on. I can't stay too long here. They'll, they'll be coming looking for me. Dr. Hill? Dr. Hill, there's a plot. I know that sounds crazy. You're probably thinking, my God, this poor girl is really flipped. But I, I haven't flipped, but Dr. Hill, I swear, by all the saints, I haven't. There are plots against people, aren't there? People are very often uh, afraid of, of too obvious casting. I like obvious casting. We have uh, four main characters in Rosemary's Baby. Uh, the leading part is Mia Farrow. Then John Cassavet is playing her husband. And there is another old couple. And they live behind the wall on the same floor. We knew uh, what type of girl we need for Rosemary. And it's the leading part. I just thought Mia fit the part. Not in the beginning, though. I saw a more healthier, more stronger, maybe a little bit more sexy girl in the beginning. But uh, uh, there was, a, there was a, a Bob Evans suggestion to use the Mia, and I got along with it. Then was uh, John Cassavetes to play the husband. Well, the quality number one is that the actor fits the part. I needed somebody who looks like an actor, who looks like a New York actor, can be a bit actor studio. And I thought that John Cassavetes would fit this part perfectly. Oh, and working with Ruth Gordon and Sidney Blackman, oh, this super, they're the best, too. It's a best company. Ruth is, what can I say? Ruth is great. Ruth is a genius, and I adore her. I've known her before I worked with her, you know, and I was longing to work with her someday. Great actress. And Sidney I just met on this film. I adore him. What talented people. I said immediately, this is the person, and I knew him from the pictures that I saw previously. I knew Ruth Gordon from the films that we see that, uh, that she made before. Not many, not very good films, but she was always wonderful. And I knew that those two will make a perfect couple. The cast of vets on the seventh floor? We are. You have a young woman named Teresa Gianofrio living with you? We do. What's wrong? Has there been an accident? You'd better brace yourself for some bad news. She's dead. 
jumped out of the window. That's not possible. That's a mistake. Artie, you want to let these folks take a look, please? I knew this would happen. Roman's hobbies denote an often restless nature. Well, I think every man likes driving fast cars. It depends on how fast you can go. I like pets. I had a horse. I've got five dogs. I've got a bird. I've got several turtles. I have a couple of toads. The feeling that the, 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 the car gives you is the amplification of yourself. You just press this pedal and you go fast and it makes a lot of noise. Have a lizard. I love animals. Yeah, Malcolm. I had him since he was a tiny kitten and I always took him to work with me. Even when I was doing plays in New York, I used to put him in my galoshes and take him to work, and I leave him in my in my snow boots. A kiss for the dog Saperstein. A kiss for the cat Malcolm. A kiss for the missus Sharon. Roman found California fantastic. Of Los Angeles, he says, Everything is easy here. You want to uh, uh, learn karate, you can learn karate. You want to play chess, you can play chess. You want to ra uh, uh, drive racing cars, you can drive racing cars. You can, I think everything is um, accessible in this town. I mean, I do have fun. I do enjoy myself. It it's a need in, in my life, I suppose. I never analyze it, it just sort of happens. It's all a great giggle, isn't it? You can't take anything too seriously. I'm not a flighty person, I don't think. I do take many things very seriously, but I, I, don't, I don't think I inflict it on other people. There's so many things just, oh wow, the sun rises and it's free, you know, from there on in. There's so many things, beautiful things that make one happy. I think that Mia's childlike attitude comes out from the feeling that it charms a lot of people. And uh, I don't think that this is what she really likes to be. I don't think that she picked up this attitude because she feels well this way. She just feels that people like it. But I think that we're speaking about things that are which is disappearing in her. Because, as I said, since she came back from India, she seems being further and further from this attitude. Because <laughs> we all painted our huts different colors, because, well, that was my idea, because things should be pretty. Everything should be pretty. And I put love on it, because love is the nicest word I could think of. And peace is secondary, because peace is a result of love. Love is the highest thing that man can give and be and do and live in love. That's what I would hope for in my life. Much love. The love and peace attitude of hippies is one of the most positive things that we could observe in the youth after war. There were different periods. There were beatnik period. There were periods. There were people with motorcycles. There were uh, people with 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 with, with uh, bicycle chains. That for the first time, the young people are, are peaceful and and want to speak about love and peace, and they really mean it. And that's what's so great about it. that chart to put people on. If they were nice to me, they'd get a star, and if they were mean to me, they'd get a black dot. <laughs> no, then Roman made my chart and graded me, it turned into a whole thing. I tore up my chart. 
Not because of Roman's shot, no. It was, I got angry at something, I forget what it was now. Just something, I was in a fit and I tore up the whole jar. I think it's sad when people are, when they're grown-ups too long and they forget the joy of being a child. I still, I keep thinking there'll be one sort of day when thunder will strike and I'll be a grown woman of something and I'll be all changed, but it hasn't happened. I still like and do the same things I, I've always done. Well, when I'm doing things, I have fun and I never think about it. I'm just having fun and it's joy. And I do things I enjoy and the joy just comes out. And if it's childlike, well, that's just a name someone put on it for joy, I suppose. I have a great need to be alone. I mean, there's that, too, and I like peace. And even since the film, I mean, one goes through so many changes. My thing right now is I, I don't like socializing. From time to time, celebrities visit the set. Joan Crawford, Van Johnson, Michael Caine, Tony Curtis, and Lauren Bacall with producer Bill Castle. And from London, old friend Jean Shrimpton. Especially welcome, Ilya Kazan, who came to see how the kids are doing. We're, we're discussing with Kazan the technical and optical uh, problems of using handheld camera and the harness that I designed for my films, the harness that we were using in the Rosemary's Baby that I used previously in, in other films. The details are very important for me. I think that they are most important than anything else. And in final analysis, I, f I find that everything is the detail. I mean, <laughs> uh, 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 whatever, what, oh, what, what, whatever you do on this stage is working with the detail. And I think that uh, if you don't attach this extreme importance to every detail, you, you are just lazy. I never designed the movement of the camera first and then try to, to fit the actors or the situation into this movement. I do the opposite. I start with actors, I let them go uh, through the scene, and then I try to follow what they do with the camera. I think that doing re the reverse is like having a ready suit and try to find a man that fits it. He's my friend. I love Roman. But our basic thing, we groove together. What can I say about her? I think she's extremely disciplined, young actress very sensitive, not tricky. Uh, she uh, has none of this uh, uh, method business. She just does things straight. She believes in what she does. She can concentrate. And I think the two most important things in an actor are concentration and relaxation and maybe it's it's maybe sounds funny but from my experience and I used to be an actor this is what's the most important to can relax completely but in the same time to be concentrated I know uh, my job uh, what I'm gonna do and it doesn't start till Roman says action for me I mean it's in my head that there's a part of I suppose my whole being tucked away for that scene, but it's quite preserved. You know, the whole thread of, of Rosemary's Baby, the whole film, I, I had a something special tucked away. But in between, there's no point in seeing me brooding about it. In fact, it probably would destroy it. So yeah, I do have fun. Makes it all the better.
can't hurt you, Rose. We're your friends, Rosemary. There's nothing to be afraid of, Rosemary. Honest and truly, there isn't. There's nothing but a mild sedative to calm you down. You know, I wouldn't let anyone... Oh. Rose! Rose! picture we have quite dramatic scene the Mia comes into the room she is surrounded by people who are more or less the, the en her enemies as we are with Mia I mean we are with Rosemary we I mean audience it's, it's shown from a, her point of view the whole film it's shown from her point of view like the book it's written almost in the first person there is no a scene in a film which could not be seen by rosemary it's very subjective well mia it was very easy for her because she was in the part when an actor does thing right he does it right from the beginning to the end and everything is easy for him and it's easy to work with him when the actor cannot feel the part and fights it, then he starts being difficult, he starts blaming it on other people, on trousers, on makeup, on the director, on the light, and it's just a disaster. We didn't have this problem with Mia because everything went easy for her. She just went through it and she, she did what was right, you see, and that's easy, she picks up direction. I'm adaptable to style. I've to, to a director's style and approach. It's not necessarily mine. I just do my thing. When the actor doesn't feel the part, you have to uh, break him and to make him accept the things, which is pitiful and painful operation. There's no convincing one. We, we talk about things sometimes, little details about you know, the way I would be doing something. It, it was usually just details like business little unimportant things. There was never any great, great thing we argued about. Whatever comes out is just, I think, understanding and feeling what's happening. It's not even necessarily feeling, it's just understanding and these things come out. That's something best not talked about too much. I don't understand it totally myself. It's a combination of skill and emotion and what one has felt and what one hopes to feel and what one it's it's something so so inside that i i can't put it into words the last bit of this of the film there was a lot of emotion of uh, you know spent i i didn't know myself how it would come out completely because so much of it was wordless depending on action and I don't know where it comes from, and it, it just came out. Beyond that, I can't say. Roman would tell me what he wanted from me. I had my own thing inside, and between the two of us, it came out. I don't like to talk about acting. It's, um, there are books written on the subject. I don't know where it, it comes from, something, some place very private within me, and I, I don't like to analyze it. What have you done to it? What have you done to its eyes? Mia and Roman, 
they met to make a movie. From the fusing of these two instinctive talents came the discovery of a superb actress and a mutual philosophy of love and understanding. After all, Rosemary's baby became all of our baby. It, it's, Rose, it's Roman's baby. It, it was my baby. It was everyone on the crew on the set, William Castle's baby. I think those months we worked on that film, it was all of our baby.